What's up, everybody? We're back at you for another video. Today, we're going to talk about real estate, rental real estate to be exact. Um, of course, you know, you got all the real estate platforms out there on social media, the bigger pockets, the Graham Steffens, the Meet Kevins, and all those. Uh, my favorite is one rental at a time, Michael Zuber. Uh, I'm not saying that to, you know, plug them on the video so everybody look at them. I'd rather y'all look at us, but Michael Zuber do provide great content, him, the Lumberjack landlord and Dion talk financial peace that's just true facts those are people that are in the game that's actually doing it and they give the best insight in my view um i listen to those guys and just like me and alex we're in the game and we try to give you the insight from being in the game but today we're going to talk about you know what made us get into real estate you know what's the purpose behind it and um you know, Alex, you know, he wanted the Ferrari, you know, had a pretty girls hanging outside of it. That's why he got into it. But but we had let him speak on it by itself. But so Alex, let's jump into it. So what was your main focus on why why did you jump into real estate? All right. So the whole time I just want to say the the reason Kirby got into it, to conquer the world. So but really the reason for real estate is it's I mean, someone that started with stocks, and I know you started with stocks too, and mm -hmm. you introduced me to stocks first. It's a, I think I like this. I like the stock method. I like investing in the stock market, but real estate is something where I feel like I can take my profits from the stock market and I can lock it into something that's going to exponentially grow in value while at the same time providing an income and so you can't really leverage that on the stock market you can't put forty thousand into the stock market and then get the benefit of you know making a hundred x and or more than that really because you're leveraging that money you know like if you take 40 50 grand and you could put it into a property worth a hundred and fifty thousand and then you can get the growth on that hundred and fifty rather than on just what you've put up front there's a lot of equity from there and on top of that a stable income if you've managed the properties correctly so i like the stock market for the fact that you it's another way to provide you with an income and to grow your capital but deploying that capital and then reserving it into something that's not um liquid i guess you could say and that can provide wealth for you and your family i think is why i like to go that route yeah it's the real estate market is something different so just giving people a, a quick backstory i was 100 stocks i didn't want to deal with tenants i didn't want to deal with none of the headache um I didn't know about uh, selling call options at the time when I was in the stock market. It was just total build your portfolio, make your portfolio grow, make your portfolio grow. But then, of course, I have the aptitude to listen to people that's older than me. And even though I think most of them are just old and they just don't know what the heck they're talking about, I do listen because sometimes somebody give you a gym that you just can't walk away from. And uh, I'll never forget it. Um, it was a gentleman i was at a baseball game actually and his exact words was you know we talking about investing i told him that i was only investing in the stock market and he said y'all kids these days don't know nothing about the power of a physical asset something that you could touch you can hold and something that you can drive by and see and say yeah that say that i i own it and then I could have totally dismissed the gentleman right there. Like this old bag don't know what the heck he talking about. This is a new day and age, you know, it stops or nothing. But I don't do that. I always research what people talk about. And then it was funny. Um, we had that conversation, I believe on a Thursday. And then within two and a half, three weeks after that conversation, he just said that it wasn't no follow up conversation. He said that. And then I just re researched what he was talking about. And then I learned about, you know, the real estate game. And then within three weeks of that conversation, I bought my first rental property. And, and you know, the first rental property, and people will realize this once they get into it, the cash flow from it was maybe three to $500 a month. And I'm looking like, 
I just spent fifty thousand dollars to make three hundred dollars a month, and then I'm I'm like most people. Well, how many years is it gonna take me to get my money back? And then I'm saying this math don't add up. This ain't this ain't the game for me. But then as I further dove into the situation, you know, building relationships, you know, talking to tenants, you know, doing it, then I realized, okay, if I replicate this, you know, 10, 15 more times, then that three to five hundred becomes three to five thousand, turns into 10 to 15,000 turns into 30 to 40,000 a month. If I just keep replicating this and this is cash money that's coming into my bank account every month with the stock market, I didn't have that money coming to my bank account. You know, stocks is just paper, you know, the value goes up, it goes down, you know, you might get some dividends and the money that you put in the, in the stock market, the dividends that, or the cash flow that it, it produces from the dividends don't come close to the amount that if you put that same money in real estate, the cash flow that it will uh, provide you in that avenue. Um, but it took that, it took for me doing it to see it. And then, and then uh, other realizations happen, you know, like the whole net worth thing. I was big on net worth. And then coming to the realization, you can't spend your net worth. Net worth is just something that you, you could talk about. You know, net worth is, you know, assets minus liabilities. That's just how much you work if you just had to liquidate everything. You know, what you can spend is cash flow. What you can spend, bills come due every month. And you need that cash flow to keep, you know, keep generating so you can pay for those, you know, necessities and leisures in your life. And I've seen that it took less money in real estate than in the stock market to produce that cash flow to pay for those things. So, but it was an evolving method for me to get into it. Um, but... It was a necessary evil that I had to go through and I'm glad that I went through it now because, you know, now, you know, I'm shooting for, you know, triple digits on the number of properties that I own. And and it's it's a beautiful thing. Let's just call it what it is. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but for the people that's watching, if you get your first rental property, you're not going to be you'll be super excited that you got the property. But when all that excitement run down. You're going to see the cash flow and then you're going to wonder like, what the hell is this? You cannot, the real estate game is not one property. You, sh If your goal is not to get five properties or more, then you shouldn't even think about rental properties at all. If you just say, hey, I'm going to rent out this one property and I'm just going to buy another property and live in it. And then that's it for me. I would just get out the rental game at all because it's, the juice is not worth the squeeze with one rental property in my view. I mean, there's other people out there that may say different, but me doing this for a little while now, and I'm seeing the cash flow, it's not worth it to deal with the headaches of the tenants with just one property. So Alex, with that being said, so, you know, it's the mantra out there that, you know, people that got all these rental properties, they're greedy, they're taken away from, uh, they're taken away from the people that want to buy houses and live in it. So what is the reason why you decided to get multiple rental properties? Why didn't you just get one and just call it a day and go on with life? You know, you conquered the world. You have your own property you live in. Now you have a rental property. So what made you just keep going after the one? So the reason I kept going was just what you said was you can't really see that great of a return from just one rental property. You have to accumulate. And I think it was a webinar with, I think it was anderson business advisors where they were talking about seven is like the i don't want to say seven is a lucky number because that sounds so cliche but he, they were it was something along those lines um after seven units is when you can see basically an income that is like an actual monthly income where you are earning something similar to what a job would be paying you and so i had my eyes kind of focused on that and like oh if i could get to seven that'd be interesting to see where i'm at there and then you know acquiring the first one really just opened up my eyes to how to go about it and how to deal with the process and it was definitely stressful as a first time investor but it was like adrenaline or thrill 
And so it was like to be able to just like acquire a whole nother property. You know, I had my house, but to be able to do that and then thinking of continuing to do that, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So then I just started setting my eyes on the next ones. Yeah, and and people people believe that it's greed involved. It's it's really not greed. And if I can translate anything to the viewers that's watching, it's first off, it's not greed. And everybody has that illusion. Once somebody have one rental property, then oh, they're rich. The truth of the matter is not like we explained earlier in the video. It doesn't take as much money. in real estate as it do in the stock market to produce an income. It don't take that much money, but the money that it produces is not a lot, especially when it comes to rental. I mean, just think about it. It's mortgages on these properties. A lot of people believe the landlord owned the property outright, but no, they owe a mortgage, they owe property tax, they owe insurance, they have to pay for the maintenance, HOA fees, uh, exterminators, the whole nine, what, whatever problems come up, buying new roofs, Uh, especially in Florida, insurance insurance prices increasing, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100 uh, percent year over year in some cases. So a lot of that money that come in goes out. So let's say the spread is maybe, you know, two, three hundred dollars per property. But the owner has obligations. So if somebody wants to actually replicate the income, so let's just use three hundred dollars a month as the income. So. Let's say somebody makes $30,000 a year. Alex, you went to you know, private school. So $30,000 a year. How much money do you need to make per month to replicate $30,000 a year? You would need That's like about... 20, 27, 8, 27, 2800 around there per So month. 27, 2800 bucks. So 27, 2800 bucks. So if you get $300 cash flow for one unit, you need like nine properties to replicate that. If you're just using the same metrics of $300 cash flow. So they have these properties, but understand they have obligations with them. So eventually, you know, after holding these properties for years, paying down the debt and then uh, increasing the cash flow where rent increases, then they'll get there. But it's not just a, a one property. This guy's rich. He's trying to he's trying to uh, just take from the poor, take advantage of the poor, things like that. No, their obligation goes up also. You know, as the owner of the property, their obligation goes up. I mean, I remember one property that I have here in Florida, when I bought it four years ago, the property taxes was only $900 a month. And now I'm paying $3,500, I mean, $900 a year. Now I'm paying $3,500 a year for the same property. Also on that property, I put a new roof on that property. I rewired the electric electrical in the property. I redid the sub flooring and put in new flooring and remodeled both of the properties. All that is money that had to come out of my pocket to do it. So when you're charging the rents, the rent is to exceed what you had to pay to go out and then put some money into you and your family's pocket. So that's why you need multiples to do this replicated over and over and over again. to do it. It's not about greed. It's about being able to escape that rat race of depending on a corporation or institution to uh, determine what your family's future is. But in that, as landlords, you have an obligation to the tenants to make sure that they're living in a habitable space that you would live in with your family. So Those are the nuances that go with it, but the reason why they go for more, go for more and get more, and that's why we go get more, is to increase the cash flow so it will further escape us from having to live in that day-to-day -day rat race of depending on a corporation to determine our family's financial income or outcome, excuse me. Yeah, and I like you explained it that way because it's not just, oh, I bought a property, now I'm making cash flow, and it's that easy. I mean, especially when you buy your first property, you, you're you making cash flow if you've done your numbers right. So that's the first responsibility you have. You do your numbers right, then you have to actually acquire the property and make sure that you stay within budget. And then from there, you have to make sure that you manage your tenants correctly and you don't have someone that's just going to drain your pockets while they're there and you're trying to save for the next one. So there's a lot. Of, I mean, uh, you know, because people can say, oh, it's greedy, but really you just dumped all your savings into this property 
to make $200 a month. And now you're on the hook for the property if anything goes wrong with it. And you're watching everyone else go out to eat and go party while you're just scrambling, trying to make your money back because you just put it into one property. So, I mean, it's really a process. It's really, you know, a lot of work involved when you're first starting. And if you can do it well and efficiently, then, yeah, you can accumulate properties. And then by then you get that wealth, that financial freedom. But it's it's a longer process than most think of just, oh, these landlords are greedy and they're just out to get you. I mean, we we have, you know, we as landlords understand that with one thing going wrong now, we we're up for f figuring out how to deal with the situation. Yeah. And, and Alex, you said it was well said. It's a, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, but the reason why we we do it is because we love being miserable. <laughs> we love being miserable and uh, doing those things. But it's a service business and we love providing good services and good services in return gives us a good life for us and our families. So that's the purpose of it. It's not about greed. It's about just be willing to do what's necessary to make sure your family is taken care of no matter what. But with all that being said, y'all have a good day. Um, please like and subscribe. Comment. You know, we love the comments because we will reply to every comment. Trust me, I'm there clicking. <laughs> so make sure you uh, comment because I'm willing to give uh, my feedback on anything that you say. Uh, but with all that being said, y'all have a good day and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.